Good evening, everyone. Kyle with Andrew Hilton Wine and Spirits. Welcome to our 43rd uh, Craft Beer Wednesday, Wednesday Night Beer Tastings. So uh, this is one of our apparent real run. Uh, it started out as three, but now I think it's going to be five brewery profile tastings. Uh, tonight's is Tofino Brewing, obviously out of Tofino, BC. And I'm joined with uh, Grant Flegg from Copper and Theory. Good evening, Grant. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, so Tofino Brewing, founded in 2010 uh, in a town of like 1,900 people, which doesn't sound desperately sustainable for a brewery, but uh, these guys got a real following here in Western Canada. Uh, let's dive into the uh, Dimension Ascension Dry Hop Pale, and why don't you walk us through a little of the history behind Tofino and how you became involved as the importer to Alberta. So now I, I usually think of like the, the craft brewery explosion here starting in kind of 2016-ish, 2015 with like the launch of Blind Men, but obviously things have been, they're a little further along in BC, obviously. Um, 2011 is kind of just at the start of the craft brewery explosion in BC, I'd say. So now with Tofino, these, uh, we've got two very different distinct can styles here, I've noticed. Um, two different brewmasters kind of are the inventors of these recipes as well. Yeah, so uh, the first brewmaster uh, is going to be responsible for uh, the recipe on uh, kelp stout and maybe wonders of nature. I don't actually have that. An sorry, uh, and uh, maybe ethereal. I don't actually have the answer on that one. Uh, but uh, with the new newest brewmaster, Andy, uh, he came in and as his first offerings for the brewery, uh, wrote the recipes for uh, wonders of nature and dimension ascension. Uh, and so that's also why we see a bit of a different art style in those cans. Conceptually, they're uh, supposed to be going together more as their uh, more modern, hot forward offerings. Well, you say that, and yes, this Dimension Ascension is a little bit darker than I expected, kind of like a super modern West Coast pale. This is more the color I'd expect from like Sierra Nevada pale ale. A little more <laughs> copper in color. I, I dig it. I like a little bit malt, more malt forward on some of these. So why don't you walk us through Dimension Ascension here? Uh, so yeah, for, uh, for Dimension Ascension here, uh, sorry, I've got, uh, got my notes over here. Um, Dimension Ascension, you, you can really taste that that more uh, 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 fruity forward note, uh, very very clear body. You can still get a, a bit of a malt profile to it, um, but nice nice and dry finish. Not too dry, but enough that it really wants you uh, to ask you back for, to keep drinking it. I think it's great for just like you know cruising on the beach as you might do in Tofino. Definitely going for more of that sessionable style. It's not just the um the very super pale hop juice style that we see these days with, you know, all citra all the time, low alcohol style beers. Um, this is really earthy um, and more so than I'd have expected. Is this uh, maybe some old world hops? Like are we seeing Hollertau or Tetnanger or something in here to give us more earthiness? Or is that just something that I'm picking up on maybe the water? Uh, it could be more of the water profile. It should be uh, largely New World hops in this guy. They are using a little bit of oats, uh, so that might be responsible for that uh, uh, nuttiness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you can often get uh, nuttiness with uh, mostly malt, uh, malted oats. You'll get more of a nuttiness. Uh, but uh, yeah, and you wouldn't even think it, from, again, from that color and that uh, clarity of the body. But uh, interesting that you mentioned the water, too, there, though. Uh, the water profile is what they think gives them a lot of their taste uh, in the beer. It's coming from a very specific uh, area. Uh, so this is the Mears Island Reservoir uh, that they get all their water from, and they do a lot of work with uh, uh, water reclamation at the brewery as well. And uh, uh, yeah, and so it's that that old growth, untouched uh, uh, reservoir that they're getting their water from. A little bit harder water, maybe a little bit of salt being right on the coast there, because I definitely get more maybe more texture than I expect from like a classic West Coast pale like this. Now again, some of that might be the oats, but yeah. Is there a touch of salinity to this? Is there maybe a bit of salt to this that I'm not expecting? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, I'm not sure. Usually when you get all that coastal water, it, it tends to be pretty soft. Um, so I'm, I'm, they could be adding something to it, or could, that could be the, the, the natural reservoir there. But uh, yeah, uh, also, I mean, with that old growth forest, you're going to pick up all sorts of minerals in the, uh, uh, in the earth there. 
You see, the first time I have you on for an interview, that's when you get all the low ball, like softball questions. Now you get nailed to the wall. <laughs> oh, tell me about the salinity profile in your water source that isn't actually from your brewery. Yeah. Uh, what's about this? The so first time when you had me on for the yellow dog tasting, that was... Uh... <laughs> that was much easier, <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, easy. Uh, so tell me about uh, Copper and Theory's involvement. Is this one of those breweries that we're only getting now because of COVID? Is this something like, uh, say, Superflux, where we'd normally not get it at all, but you know, the tap room being closed is why we're starting to see it? Or is this something that's been in and out of Alberta before? Uh, we've actually been supporting uh, Tofino for a number of years now. I, I can't remember exactly how far back uh, at this point. But uh, for my entire involvement and for a number of years before that, we've been working with Tofino. Uh, so it's definitely been on the market for quite a long time now. Uh, over COVID, we did see a bit of a break uh, with them on the market, and that was a choice from them that just uh, uh, to, more, to keep more stuff in-house. Uh, they were seeing increased tourism numbers for longer in Tofino, mostly because probably uh, people couldn't actually cross the border to, to fully snowbird the way that they want to. So Tofino seemed like the next best choice from there. So uh, they, yeah, they just dropped the production a little bit, and unfortunately that means that we didn't uh, see any in Alberta. Uh, and But also... Uh, the mainland, I think, uh, mainland BC didn't see as much as they were used to either. Now, I will be honest, I didn't actually know where Tofino was before yesterday when I started doing the reading on this. It sounds like a really different place. Like, it's on the west coast. It's literally the end of the road. A lot of their stuff comes in by seaplane. It sounds like a very special place to be. Um, I, I grant that, you know, the, the tourism numbers must be the entire reason you can have a brewery there. But um, is it more? Being a, a, go ahead. Uh, you'd be actually surprised. They have a really strong and loyal population that's in Tofino themselves. Uh, you know, the, the community tends to rally really hard around the uh, around the brewery. Uh, and so I've been chatting to a lot of guys from the brewery. And they say that uh, uh, in the famous Tofino windstorms or any time that the power goes out, a lot of the time Tofino has backup generators. People are flocking to the brewery uh, uh, just to, you know, stay warm and uh, stay sheltered. And that's actually a thing in winter is like people come to just like storm watch, which is wild to me. Let's just show up for the bad weather because that's a thing. <laughs> I don't have enough bad weather at home. I will openly say I've never been to Tofino, so I'm probably completely missing the point. I probably sound like a terrible landlocked prairie pleb, but, you know, I, I can't imagine flocking somewhere for the, the terrible weather. It's uh, actually rather gorgeous. I, I've never been fortunate enough to be in Tofino while they were having the, the gorgeous storms that people uh, hunt out for photography. Uh, but I, I did go to Tofino in January last year, and it was snowing on a beach, which was a new one for me. Um, but uh, yeah, even if you just do any amount of Googling on these uh, Tofino storms, they are they are something to behold, uh, truly. Yeah. So I imagine that uh, even just in person, that must just feel like a magnanimous experience. Wonderful. Uh, let's jump kind of coolly right along to the Ethereal IPA. Um, walk us through this one, please, sir. So yeah, uh, Ethereal IPA. Uh, for this one, um, new flagship uh, IPA for them. This has only been in the lineup for uh, about a year, I think, at this point. What's uh, maybe a little bit longer. What was the old flagship IPA? Uh, so the old one was Hop and Cretan IPA, and that was more of the West Coast profile expression. Um, we, I believe, the last I heard, we still will be seeing that one kind of off and on, uh, but this one is taking its place in the flagship lineup. Uh, and so this, much more of that modern hazy expression, uh, uh, and uh, cashmere and eureka hops are in this one. I'm familiar with cashmere a little, but I'm not that familiar with eureka. What should we be getting on this? Well, with eureka, uh, <clears throat> it's a lot more of that. Uh, uh, that's still very... Uh, a tropical experience with it, uh, tangerine tropical uh, uh, tasting notes. I can see trop. I, I can see tangerine. I could definitely see like mandarin orange as well. And I'd say almost your your big bitter citrus isn't really grapefruit. It's more like key lime. Um, mm. And then I can the, definitely pick up that lime. Yeah, and almost something herbal, fresh mint maybe is, is really. It also might be the slightly minty hand soap we have in the bathroom. That's also quite possible. Um, no, it's definitely there. There's something marjoram, mint, something very pretty in there. I'm quite liking that. I, uh, I do think this is a gorgeous little IPA. Uh, and they do keep the, the bitterness on this fairly robust. Uh, and I, the way that I like to talk about this um, is 
if you have a wine that's uh, like a red wine that uh, doesn't have any acidity, it, 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 it's, it's, the structure's bad you to get a flabby wine. I find you get the same with hazy IPAs a lot of the time, where if they don't have enough butter, uh, sorry, uh, bitterness to support the fruitiness of the hops, then it ends up being a bit of that, that flabby uh, IPA. Yeah, I won't say which one I had, because uh, I actually genuinely enjoyed the beer, but there was a beer, it was an East Coast IPA, that to me came off very much like Belgian Moon or Rickard's White. Like, it was just, it was all fresh fruit juice, and it it didn't remind me that much of an IPA. It was a pleasant beer, but if I was presented it blind, I'd have called it like a, a slightly hoppy Belgian White. It didn't come off like an IPA to me. Uh, and I do like a, a couple of things about this. Yes, there is still a bit more uh, bitterness, which I do enjoy. Uh, and the alcohol is still very old school cool at 6.7. Uh, I still remember a day when IPA was 7%, uh, and now there's double IPAs at 7.5. Um, I don't know. Do you miss like the, the bigger, richer, high alcohol IPAs of yesteryear? Or are you still fine with IPA now being, you know, five and a half to six? It's definitely easier on the morning afters with the way that it is now. Uh, but, uh, you know, every once in a while, it'll creep back onto the market when you find those uh, West Coast IPAs that'll crack up to like, you know, uh, uh, six, five, sorry, seven, five, and then higher. Uh, and those can be, <laughs> I really hit the spot sometimes. But uh, largely, I I'm okay with lower alcohol. I'm broadly okay too, but I still like the, the little bit of a throwback style because I do like the, it just adds some weight and it adds some power, the little bit of extra alcohol. It just makes the beer, I don't know, weightier, richer. It, it adds something to me with some of the old school IPAs. Mm. I mean, part of this as well with the, with the new hazy IPAs, I, I, maybe we shouldn't be calling them new anymore. Um, Not really, no. I think that we're <laughs> replacing some of that weight on the palate with the uh, with the thickness of, uh, of uh, uh, the additional dry hopping or, or, or the oats and wheat that we're adding. Just uh, the physical presence. Uh, and Craig, in answer to your question of how many Volvo 240s you have to own before you can qualify as a hippie, it's three, unless any of them are wagons, at which point it's one. So... Uh, how are things holding up for you in uh, Calgary there, Grant? Like, uh, how's COVID treating you these days? Uh, has anything really changed for you in terms of market, other than the fact it's been all retail all the time for the last year? There has been a bit of that. Uh, certainly staying at home a lot more these days, uh, uh, venturing out into the into the big disease-filled world only when absolutely necessary. Uh, but uh, yeah, really working on the phone banter. It, it's, it's really hard to read people's expressions uh, when you, you can't actually see their faces. Uh, so really trying to uh, learn their tone of voice is, uh, is uh, uh, being the, the skill picked up during COVID for me. It's interesting. I try to be very clearly disinterested on the phone. Oh, yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah, that sounds so wonderful. I'm so excited. No. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot of that. I try to be very transparent when I'm not interested, um, which I think most reps would appreciate. But yeah, no, mm -hmm. I... I can't imagine trying to do everything by phone because so much of beer is like, here's the beer, here's why I'm excited about it, get it in your mouth, you're gonna love this, this is why I love this. It's kind Absolutely. of what you and I that's do. Been, that's been the number one uh, uh, weapon in my tool belt for a long time is, hey man, I'm excited about this beer, put this beer in your mouth, let's drink this right now. And uh, that's uh, less of an option now. Now yeah. I have to rely on knowing things, which is, that's I don't bullshit. like it. Yeah, I know, I have to do research <laughs> for these tastings. I mean, on the other hand, people actually come to my tastings now. Before we do in-store tastings, and like the same four people would show up and never buy anything. Now we do a tasting and people actually buy kits and we interact and people ask questions and get guest speakers. It's way better, but I actually have to know stuff. It's terrible. Apparently people are less intimidated to ask questions, guaranteed the relative anonymity of the internet, rather I than in person where you might feel like too. a good event. Yeah, I think you're absolutely dead on with that. Because I certainly enjoy getting questions about things like... I, again, like I did seven hours of research. Uh, I was actually talking with, uh, everybody here will know Marissa, um, just uh, about an hour before we started the show here. Uh, and she was like, well, how much research do you do for wine tastings? Like last week's I did seven hours for the Syrah tasting. And I maybe talked about a quarter of what I actually read up on, but it was just in case you got that weird question you didn't see coming. Yeah, there's a lot of that. And I, I love how much I've learned out of doing these for a year. Absolutely. And I'm yeah, sure it's this is a great way to, uh, Yep. I mean, unless you get those curveball questions of how much salt is in the water. Yes, but you know, you, you're really going to come <laughs> to expect those from me. 
And let's be fair, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a Wednesday night in February. You'd either be doing this and talking cool beer, or you'd be standing at Jim Bob's Discount Liquor. Here, would you like an ounce of Tofino Brewing? Oh, no, you're just going to get a 15-pack <laughs> of Old Mill. Great. In enjoy your Old Mill, sir. Hi, would you like to try Tofino? Because I know that in-store sampling is death for agents. Uh, I've known many an agent who would rather cut their own wrist than do another in-store tasting like that. <laughs> or do you guys get away be, from uh, that a little bit? We uh, don't do as much in-store tastings as uh, other agencies are, are mandated to do. Uh, so fortunately, we get to be a little bit more uh, picky and we get to choose uh, which ones we feel will actually uh, benefit the company rather than just be you know, the cost of the tasting down the sink. Yep, I feel that. All right, let's move on. And we did talk about this a little before, kettle sour versus stout, and I went kettle sour. This might be the wrong choice, but we're going to go for it. I mean, it's always that uh, the question of which one's going to be more intense, and they're just going to be intense in different ways, right? It's, is it the acidity that's going to wash out, or is it the, the rich uh, chocolate notes that are going to uh, be stronger on your palate? Hmm. Craig's got an interesting question, one that I should have asked already. Um, nice malt backbone on both of these beers. What are the brewers going for in terms of expression here? Uh, what are they looking for out of the beers? Are they looking for all hops out all the time, more of a balance? Are they looking to feature the water more? What are you... Again, you're not the brewmaster, but what's kind of the philosophy behind the beers? The way that I have always interpreted uh, Tofino's uh, brewing philosophy to be is that they don't really want to make anything that you want to drink once and then run away from, you know? But they don't want the, 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 uh, you to kind of like all the, all the mystique to be done away with as soon as you taste it. They want you to be able to drink it and then continue to drink it time and time again. Uh, and I think that they absolutely do a brilliant job uh, at balancing all of the beers in such a way that you do want to come back and, and buy it time and time again, as uh, I think is most evident uh, in the peculiar kelp stout that we'll have next. Uh, a lot of people are scared of it uh, on the outset, but then they taste it and they become intrigued and keep coming back and back again for it. But uh, sorry, wonders of nature, here we are. Oh, I dig that. I'm always surprised even with um, sours that don't have fruit, just how much fruit comes through every single time like I always get kind of ripe peach and everything else it's it's a very even when there's no fruit it's a very fruity style and I'm always surprised just how fruity even when you know it's been only a week since I've last had one. Oh, and I do like this I think this is my favorite is, so far it's a it's a gorgeous little beer I mean it's coming right out of the gate with those uh uh, I mean, the combination of the dry hopping notes and the, the kettle sour notes coming together, uh, as you were saying earlier for the previous beer, um, uh, uh, some lime notes definitely, and as you noted for this one, peach. Uh, they like to talk about uh, some oak aged Chardonnay coming through on this one. Okay, I was really about to make fun of you for that, but um, no, I kind of get it too. <laughs> so all right, I'll allow it. Because let's be fair, if it didn't show that way, you were going to get ripped apart for calling it like, oh, it's like an oak aged Chardonnay on camera. That's fine. It was going to be on I the greatest hits reel. It was going to be great. But no, it actually does actually kind of remind me of that. That's fair. I mean, more, more of that French expression of Chardonnay rather than the American expression, the California expression. You're getting dangerously close to getting ripped apart again <laughs> because that's splitting your <laughs> hair, even on the wine side. <laughs> <laughs> So I haven't asked you this before because, you know, you're mostly selling me beer, but are you, uh, obviously you've got some background in wine. Where did you come from into the in industry before, Grant? Like were you uh, retail side, restaurant side, or just straight into repping? Uh, yeah, no, I did, uh, I did come from the retail side. Uh, my very, very first gig in, uh, in liquor overall, it was about 10 years ago, almost 10 years ago now, uh, was uh, Sobey's Liquor Store. Uh, that was the very first one. Yep. Uh, and uh, that was re really the foot in the door. Uh, it wetted my whistle enough that I knew that I wanted to keep keep doing this and keep drinking this, uh, it was specifically with the craft beer. Uh, but unfortunately for the, their beer program at that time, wasn't enough to keep me interested. Uh, I, I think they're doing an absolutely great job. Um, but uh, yeah, but that was back in 2013. I just wanted to shift gears for my own education. And so I ended up going to another store called the Kensington Liquor Cellar. Yeah, um, and was the beer guy there, and then moved to Highlander, uh, and that's where I started my wine education. Uh, have not kept up on that since I left in 2016, unfortunately. Uh, but 
still a delight every time that I get to uh, open a bottle of wine with friends. You're right. You were really going to go for the very politic answers. You weren't wrong. <laughs> but no, you I got mean, you got in for beer and you stuck to the beer. That's fair. I mean, I got yeah, in yeah. for scotch and now I run beer tastings and wine tastings and occasionally a whiskey event. So. Let me tell you, I know little to nothing about scotch, but I get in trouble every time that I drink it and I love it. Yeah, scotch is a lot of fun. Uh, we're doing scotch again um, three Fridays from today. I actually just... Uh, I just had a really interesting conversation with Lee Hansen. He just donated a really expensive bottle to our upcoming whiskey tasting, which is both a wonderfully generous and kind gesture and also a huge problem because we sell more than one bottle's worth of scotch tastings at a time. So now I have to open a second one <laughs> and somehow work in the cost of one bottle across all the kits. It's going to be great, but that was an <laughs> unexpected, wonderful problem to have drop in my lap. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? It's rare that the IPA isn't my favorite on the lineup, but this is really speaking to me in, in a way I wouldn't have expected. Like, I usually like a very, like, dry, right up front with the hops, very in-your-face style kettle sour, and this is, or I like one that's very spicy and very, you know, fruited. Uh, I'm all about Tainted Love by Establishment right now, just that, that right. apple crumble thing. This, on the other hand, like, this is not normally my style at all, but it's really speaking to me. I quite like this. Yeah, I mean, as I was mentioning earlier, um, Tofino really doesn't let anything out of the brewery that they're not really confident in, that they think the balance isn't there for. Uh, and, and so, yeah, kettle sours get a bit of a bad rap for uh, 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 being a little bit basic. Uh, I think that this kind of shows that there is some degree of complexity to be had, uh, even in uh, little kettle sours. Now, with, with the understanding you're not the brewmaster, is that a combination of different souring uh, bacterium, or is this just clever hopping all the way down? Uh, I'm just going to say clever hopping. Uh, and certainly uh, moderating your temperatures uh, uh, during fermentation. Now, for those clock watchers among you, I notice we are now through um, three beers in 22 and a half minutes. So um, now will be a great time for questions. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what else are we going to see from Tofino in the next few months there, uh, Grant? What else should we be really excited about from these guys? What's your favorite Tofino beer that kind of returns on a regular basis? Or is it one of the cores? I, I really do have a deep love for the for the Kelp Stout, uh, if I'm fully up front, and, and that will always hold the heart, that uh, place in my heart as one of my favorites. Uh, throughout the year, though, we do see a couple of seasonals. Uh, just having, having just landed, we actually saw their uh, seasonal double IPA called uh, Cosmic Wave. Okay. Uh, which is just really spectacular and, and really goes back to that West Coast uh, double IPA profile that we were touching on earlier. Um, and then also there are coffee porters around as well right now, and that one's in the bomber bottles. Uh, though if I'm to be fully upfront, uh, we should be getting it in the spring or summer. My favorite beer from Tofino, uh, for anybody who's watching who knows me, this will be no surprise, is their uh, Spruce Ale. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, just this beautifully well-balanced golden ale uh, and then they go out and they forage uh, spruce tips from around Tofino uh, and just add I think the exact measurement is a metric shitload of spruce tips into the beer uh, and it just tastes uh, herbaceous and bright and and minty and I, I can't drink enough of it. Okay I'm, I'm very into that because Spruce beers can either be really good or really bad. Um, I've had a couple of really not great ones over the last few months. Um, yeah, I'll be looking forward to that. That sounds really interesting. Um, it's yeah. What's uh, kind of what? What's it like visiting the Tofino Tap Room? You've obviously been there. What's the What's the scene yep. like? Is it Is it a place that people should visit? Is it a must stop when you're in Tofino? I can't imagine there's that many places to stop in a town of two thousand people. <laughs> but is it one of those things you have to experience? I mean, there are a lot of great places to go in Tofino, but uh, if, if you're spending a couple of nights there, I would certainly say that it is a place to be. Uh, there's this great community energy that's going on uh, in the tap room, and it's nice and, and bright and modern wood paneling all around. Um, but, like, the staff is just so friendly. The entire experience that they've built in the Tofino tasting room is just very, very positive. Uh, and so I definitely, definitely suggest that uh, people are in Tofino uh, to head to the tasting room. Now, also, if you just go to the next bay over, uh, just uh, down the street towards the, the main road. There's also a new distillery uh, that's opened up practically next door if uh, beer isn't your thing. 
I can't imagine anyone here at our beer tasting would be not into beer, but all right, fair enough. Um, <laughs> now, here's an interesting question from Jeremy, actually, and it's, it's actually very topical because we're just starting to see now some of the big predicted price jumps uh, coming out of, like, COVID shipping woes. Like, even staple products, Grey Goose Vodka, which is already horribly overpriced by merit of being Grey Goose, went up, like, $1.75 this week. Massey Amarone went up, like, 2 bucks. Uh, we're starting to see some real price increases because of the pinches on shipping. Um, even within Canada, because I know you mostly work, if not entirely work, with Canadian breweries, are you starting to see some like pinches with shipping and issues with shipping? Because let's be fair, getting anything off the island isn't cheap even at the best of times. Uh, we haven't seen any come through yet. Uh, we are, uh, yeah, I mean, that's really kind of the long and the short from our front. Uh, we haven't enacted any price raises for uh, shipping reasons. Uh, at this time um i have heard though from friends in the industry that there have been some some uh, issues with getting pallets from eastern canada uh coming in and some issues with the uh, pallets freezing oh mm -hmm. now again the i'll admit i'm usually used to like jf hillebrand or container world for all my international pardon me all my international shipping uh who do you know really good you know heated containers and everything else shipping internationally it always comes through one of those two companies is shipping mm -hmm. within canada different like i wouldn't have thought that freezing would be such a huge issue considering it seems to be so well sorted out whether it's coming from australia or south africa or argentina or central europe it almost doesn't matter with wine everything seems to be very well controlled how is it that canada is falling down on like temperature controlled shipping is this just we don't do that much of it but we have to do some uh the the particular issue i think in in the recent uh time frame has just been the huge temperature drop that we saw in the last three weeks here where it hit like 40 below with the wind chill uh and perhaps that we weren't quite as well equipped to deal with that huge of a price drop uh, sorry uh, not price drop a uh, temperature drop better prepared than texas though <laughs> most certainly <laughs> Um, interesting question about the tasting note. What's the tasting note for the very tail end of the sour from Chris? He's saying it's like an old wooden fence. An old wooden fence? I can't say that I've ever picked up on that. And I don't agree with John either. I don't think there's a, a metallic thing. I'll be honest, Chris, I'm not getting something like particularly woody. I'm not getting something really dusty. I'm just kind of getting the fruit and the hops right to the end. Now, there can be uh, uh, different people affected by different tastes in different ways, clearly. Absolutely. Uh, this could potentially be one of those uh, moments where uh, uh, one person's uh, coriander is another person's soap. Absolutely, you know? yes. Uh, my partner is particularly susceptible to... Uh, if uh, farmhouse beers are fermented too warm, she really picks up a big uh, nail polish remover uh, note in beers. And we all have different palate days. Like uh, we had an agent in here last week, or yeah, it was last week. Um, and I genuinely, I came out, you know, thanked them for coming in. Hey, I can't wait to try your stuff. Got two glasses in. One was a Spanish red, one was a Sonoma Merlot. They tasted exactly the same to me. Thank them for the time and sent in Devin because he could actually taste something that day. Uh, by the same token, Devin, uh, he and I were having wine after work on Monday, and he just straight out apologized and said, you know what, I think I'm just in a bad mood and I'm being really mean to these wines. Um, he came back today, he's like, yep, actually that wine was fine, that wine was actually very good. I was just not in a good mood and I was being really harsh to the wine. It, it really, palate's so variable. It's wonderful that way. Yep, yep, absolutely. Small changes in your day can dramatically change your perception on uh, on different uh, or on the same product. Any chance of a Cranog backhand of God standoff? Ooh, do I want to do another Imperial Stout week? Um, God, doing these like live on camera and doing Imperial Stout is a thankless task. I do like that beer. I genuinely do like backhand of God. I just. I don't know if I can do another Imperial Stout week. We have an Imperial Stout coming. Uh, we're doing Situation here in a couple of weeks, and we're gonna do their Sex Palace Imperial Stout. And I'm already like 
dreading that, and that's one beer two weeks out. I never want to do another Imperial Stout week. No, just never again. Thank you. Um, not because they're not delicious, just because I have to do this for a living and make sense on camera. Uh, I'm just going to take a quick break here, Grant, just talk about what's coming up next. Uh, gonna start with Friday night. We still have a handful of our grappa tasting kits left. Uh, and this is my entirely self-indulgent, I wanted to do it, and I'm gonna do it because I wanted to tasting. Um, we are doing grappa, so a very particular style of brandy from Italy, either completely unaged and clear or lightly aged. Um, grappa is, these days, probably even ahead of scotch, my favorite spirit. Uh, we're still working on a guest because our original guest bailed on us. But I mean, this is this is a passion project for me. This is something that I've wanted to do for a long time. I'm finally getting to do it. Realistically, I'm probably not going to get to do it again because sales for this have been pretty good. I don't know if we're going to sell out, but it's been pretty good. Um, this is just a one-off. I had to do it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, tickets are 35 for this one. Uh, it's going to be 30 maybe, actually, darn it, I can't remember. I, tickets are either 30 or 35. I actually think, on further reflection, these might be 30. Uh, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to this one. So that is Friday night. Uh, Wednesday night next week, uh, I did mention we have Zero Issue coming in. Uh, we're joined by Jordan Suriso, uh, and he is going to be doing their Dark Saison a couple of different sours. They're going to do their core lineup, uh, Mango Passion Fruit Sour, uh, and their Star Holler Key Lime Sour, uh, as well as their Observatory IPA, so that should be a lot of fun. Thank you, Laverne. It is $30. I was pretty sure it was, but I couldn't actually remember. Uh, and then you see some other bottles up here. Those are for the wine tasting coming up next Friday night. Uh, Thank you, Jeremy. You were actually the inspiration for this. You uh, forced Devin and I to actually get serious into looking up the pricing to see if we could actually make a Bordeaux tasting work. And we just can. So we are going to be doing a Bordeaux white, two different Bordeaux reds, a left and a right bank, and a Sauterne uh, for $85. But we will talk about that more next week or next tasting. Uh, and yes, those grappa bottles are absolutely stunning, Megan. I completely agree with you. They're all hand blown and like, I mean, the, the grappa inside is lovely too, but they're just, they're an absolute delight to hold because they don't weigh anything. They're, they're such fine, fine glass. They're absolutely wonderful. All right, Grant, thank you for bearing with me. Let's do some kelp stout, shall we? I'm excited for this one. You might have noticed by how much I poured. I'm excited for this too. This is the only one of the four beers <laughs> I actually know already. After this one. Ooh yeah. And yeah, Craig, I've completely betrayed the side. I've let the side down. I've I've gone over to the dark side with Grappa. I really love it. Makes sense. Come on, Craig. Be nice. Really, Grappa takes red wine out of a white couch. I wouldn't have believed that. <laughs> All right, fine. That's the weirdest aside of the night. Then thank you. Gold medal to you, sir. Uh, uh, sounds all right. like something you could only figure out by complete accident. Yes, it's one of those, well, I'm drunk and I spilled red wine on my white couch. And then I was more drunk and spilled Grappa on the red wine. And wow, this turned out well. All right, kelp stout. Uh, I like this beer a lot. You said they add, what, 22 pounds per batch of the kelp? 22 pounds, 10 kilograms per uh, batch of, uh, of kelp to this. And how big is a batch? Like how much, uh, how much, uh, how many liters are we talking about in terms of I 10 kilos? I cannot recall the exact size. They're, they're about this, this big of fermenters. I'm, I'm stretching my arms out all of the way around and it's still, uh, I believe they're more than 30 heck batches. Okay. Uh, but not, not more than 60. Oh yeah. And so, the, uh, the story with this one is actually really interesting. Uh, so this is uh, uh, this dates back pretty much all the way back into Pinot history, and uh, the idea was that they wanted actually to make an oyster stout uh, using oysters that they found in, that they were able to get from Tofino, and then in the process of developing this beer, found out that uh, they were allergic to oysters. Oh, oh, that's bad. Yeah, that, that would really <laughs> throw a wrinkle in your plans. Yes. 
Yeah, and uh, so that uh, forced them to pivot. They still wanted to stay very uh, ingredients from the land, uh, and they were able to find a local farm that or local supplier uh, harvesting kelp, and uh, and it worked out beautifully, as uh, as you can uh, tell from this guy. I'm going to take it aside because we have a really interesting question from Chris Hunt here. Uh, what is Grant or Artisan Beer Supply, uh, Grant's actually with Copper and Theory, uh, fit in with Liquor Connect in the Alberta beer liquor store world? Uh, for someone with no understanding of how this all works, please tell me I didn't get that wrong. You are with Copper and Theory, right? Copper and <laughs> okay, Theory, you got good. it. Yeah. <laughs> then I didn't horribly ruin everything. Good. Um, <laughs> so how it basically works is... Um, Let's start with Tofino. So Tofino brews the beer. It's in BC. They have a BC registration. It's sold within BC, um, but it's not in Alberta yet. Um, so Grant will buy the beer from Tofino, ship it up to St. Albert, uh, make sure it complies with Alberta liquor registration laws, which are basically the same as BC's by and large. Um, and then basically it's stored up at a big warehouse, which is Liquor Connect, which is a big distribution arm of the Alberta government. Basically, when I go to order the beer, um, and Grant is the only person who sells it to me, the Alberta government doesn't like try to sell anything. They have no sales division. If you don't order anything, they don't care. So they're never going to tell me that Tofino exists or that Grant exists, none of that. So basically, Grant sells the beer to me. I go to buy it from Grant, but I actually buy it from the Alberta government who takes my money, turns around, then buys it from him, and then sells it back to me, adding on the tax. So in theory, basically, they're handling the, the wholesale warehousing distribution and shipping uh, and ensuring that the tax is paid, but they don't actually do any marketing, any importation documentation, any shipping, nothing like that. Grant's entirely responsible for getting it to Edmonton, however he gets it there, whether it be you know on a pallet in the trunk of his car, however he has to do it. <laughs> um, and he's responsible for absolutely all of the marketing. You know, if he, you never market it and it just sits at uh, the Alberta government, they just keep taking their weekly case rent on it. Um, and they'll do it that to the point where it, the rent is tens of times more than the value of the product. There, are, there have been some agencies who've made some mistakes and ended up hopelessly upside down on connect fees. Um, but no, ultimately, Connect does some really neat work. They have a great website. Um, they ship anything in under 48 hours, doesn't matter what I order. But they're really expensive, and they're expensive both for Grant and for me. Um, there's a lot of shipping and handling fees that we all pay at the end of the day uh, in order for... Well, you missed my really boring lecture about Connect Logistics, so you really didn't miss anything at from all. From what I heard, you did a great job. Okay, good. I, from everything I heard, you absolutely nailed it. Okay, so, um, yeah, tell us a little bit more about the kelp stat. What do you get for notes on this one? Uh, for me, I mean, it, this is a fairly classic American stout. Uh, you're getting a, a, a rich roast note on it, uh, um, bittersweet chocolate. Uh, and then the thing that's really unique with this one is that salty umami flavor that you're getting from the, uh, from the kelp. And uh, I think it's just this beautiful, beautiful uh, note of balance for it. And it does have a, a bit of a creamier body as well, which really helps along the, the, the experience. So is it a dried kelp product? Is it salted kelp? Is it... I can't imagine it's a fermented kelp on its own. Like, I imagine this is added after fermentation. <laughs> uh, no, I don't have that information. Uh, I would guess that it is either fresh or dried. Uh, probably dried for storage purposes. I would think, but, so. I would uh, think dried, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you can go out to the beach and then just cast a line and get stout, uh, sorry, uh, get kelp, I'm not sure that you need to dry it, but... Uh, no, you can probably walk along the beach flavors. and pick it up, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. No, that's absolutely delightful. You can tell because we got really quiet. We're on a beer we really like because this is absolutely heaven. Yep. Well, that's good. That's going to uh, be my number one. I have to say. This this converts a lot of people. Whenever I do tastings with uh, with Tofino, um, there are a lot of people. Anytime you do a tasting with uh, with a stout on the table, some people are going to go, "Oh no, no, I I, I don't like stouts," um, which is an objection that you have to overcome and and to kind of go, "Hold on a second, do you drink coffee at all?" 
And they go, yeah, I, lo- I love coffee. Let's give this a try. I usually and, go the other uh, angle. It's like, know. what stouts have you had? Guinness? Well, Guinness sucks. This doesn't suck. <laughs> try this. Uh, but uh, I, I do find that I don't know what it is if uh, uh, for the first purchase, whether it's just sheer intrigue when they see it on the shelf and they see kelp stout or if they see Tofino and they just think, man, I love Tofino. What a great place. And they buy it out of uh, uh, some, some nostalgia. Uh, but they try it and people just absolutely love the beer and they keep coming back and back and back for it. And I mean, when you do taste it and taste this good, I buy it that much too. Yeah, I can completely see the repeat business on the kelp stout. I think the kelp stout is going to be the one, at least from my side, that we're going to be bringing back on the regular. Um, my rankings actually are uh, exactly the same as Deirdre's, which is happening more and more these days. It's a little weird. But uh, yeah, uh, for me, it's 4 3 one, two. Um, Oddly enough, the IPA, which I really did enjoy, I loved that it was a little high alcohol, and I loved that it was a bit of a throwback. I liked everything else a little bit better. I really love the sour and the stout. And between these two, I could see myself reaching actually for the uh, Dimensions Ascensions. So, yeah, I, I quite like that. Hmm. Well, I think we're uh, we're definitely early. Uh, so if anybody has last minute questions for either Grant or I, please uh, let me know. But otherwise, I think we might actually uh, we might wrap up a little early. We got through this pretty quickly. You know, happens now and then. Doesn't happen very often, but it happens now and then. Which means we're getting excited and, drink, uh, excited and drinking the beer. I have no issue with it. No, none at all. I mean, <laughs> th- th- it's it's always the thing when it runs over an hour and you're desperately watching your viewer numbers to see if it all falls off a cliff, you know, at 10 past mm-hmm. the hour. And you're like, I'm still having fun, but I hope everyone else is uh, <laughs> ish. Um,. Grant, do you want to put a ranking of what you like these? I mean, you're also free to pass because you're the importer, but uh, do you have like a ranking of what you like best out of these? Or even a top three? I, I will say, uh, the most I will say is that I have certainly over time bought the most of Kelp Stout. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's the most I'm willing to say. That's totally fair, and I wouldn't pressure you for more. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you, Grant. This was really fun. I really appreciate you coming out again. We will have you on again. Thanks for having me. Oh, uh, actually, what else is... uh, Well, I mean, there's other breweries on the island. There's lots of other breweries on the island. But what else to Tofino... uh, What else is in Tofino that's particularly interesting, Craig asked? Like, what else should be the draw? Why else should you go to Tofino other than the beer? Because the Uh, beer is enough, but, you know, some people (laughs) want other things. Uh, there's actually a really great restaurant in Tofino, uh, like absolutely spectacular restaurant. Uh, it's called The Wolf in the Fog, uh, and that they they uh, kind of likewise do a focus on on doing very local dishes, uh, but it's all very very great, uh, like well made cuisine. I I did not expect to have that well put together of a dish uh, in Tofino, so I'd certainly say uh, Wolf in the Fog is another place on the hit list. Uh, and then Taco Fino. Which is a taco uh, those place? Are, those are, it is the taco place. Okay. Uh, so it actually, uh, it's uh, it's a food truck that's now permanently resided uh, as you're driving into Tofino. Uh, and so they do everything in there. And because of the popularity that they had in uh, Tofino, they were able to open up permanent locations in Vancouver. I can't remember how many locations they have now, but it's uh, uh, Taco Fino. It is... If you're ever there or even in Vancouver, uh, make sure you check it out. And I apologize uh, to Jeremy and uh, to John. I haven't seen a lot of cutouts. I mean, we had a, about a five-second freeze on Grant's video. But by and large, I haven't seen a lot of cutouts. I do apologize that we've been dealing with that. It's been pretty bad. It's been the upload speed? Yeah, the upload yeah. speed's terrible this evening. Sorry, that's... I don't know why. That's, you know, it's the same router, same everything we've been dealing with all this time. Just our upload speed is acting like a dog. Um, Compared to Outcast, it's going well. Um, but uh, no, you know, for whatever reason, just our upload speed sucks for tonight. Same everything we've used for the last year. Just tonight, it's dogging out. Don't know why. Um, Mike asks, uh, you clue it? You clue it. Thank you. Uh, recommendations for there. Uh, you know, I've never... Uh, we didn't actually go south to go to uh, uh, Yuki when I was there last. 
I do believe that they have another new brewery that's just opened up uh, for uh, Euclid Brewing. Um, I've not tried the product myself, um, but try the stuff, see if you enjoy it. It's always my recommendation. Uh, but past that, I can't really speak too much about uh, Euclid. Euclid. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, and apparently that's the that's the word I'm not prepared to say on air. We've managed to get through a lot of different <laughs> stuff from France and South America and everything else, but apparently that's the word that threw me. Um, oh, Yuki, that's just that's an interesting question. Yuki. We're yeah, we're ten away from our tasting anniversary, our fifty second tasting. Um, yes, Craig, there is definitely something planned. Um, Dev and I actually had a conversation about this on Monday, and Aaron and I actually talked about this. Either last Friday or last Wednesday, I think it was last Wednesday, we talked about what we wanted to do for our one-year anniversary of beer tastings. Uh, and I think we actually took a week or two off over the last year. I think only one. So uh, I think it'll actually be beer tasting 51 will be a year. But yes, we've already started having conversations. We're going to start up, you know, hitting up Asians and saying, hey, would you kick us some beers? Um, Maybe Grant. Don't know if it'll be Grant. Maybe. Um, but yeah, we're, we're going to try and make this like a $5 ticket price, but with all like super insane stuff. We're going to try to make our one year anniversary really something. Uh, we've already had some conversations about what we can do. Maybe get some free glassware where, you know, my ideal would be you'd pick up your pack and get four beers for five to ten dollars and also get like some really great glassware out of it or s some stickers or something interesting to get a, a real big thank you for coming out for last year. Don't know exactly what we're going to be doing yet, but it's already in the conversation kind of nine, ten weeks out. So we are talking about it. All right. Well, I do apologize again. Uh, food pairings. Ooh, I mean, all over the map with these. I still like anything hot and spicy with bitter, even though it's not technically a great pairing. I just like them together. Uh, sours, I kind of think sours go with most things. I really like salads and sours. Uh, and then stout, I just like red meat with stout. Uh, you can also go pretty desserty with a stout. You can, absolutely. Uh, stout floats are an absolute massive pleasure of mine. We tried doing one on air, and then I bought the worst vanilla ice cream known to man, and it was super oily and <laughs> separated in the glass, and it was absolutely revolting. Uh, here's a Great question. How many different breweries are you repping for, Grant? And do you have anything new that you're adding to the catalog? Like, talk about what you've got coming in for the next little bit and just uh, tell us what you're excited about that everybody should be getting on board with and we should be doing kind of for our next tasting in a couple of months here. Yeah, uh, I mean, we have got, we have onboarded a couple new breweries in the last couple months here uh, and with one more on the way. So going back to December, uh, we did get our first uh, Alberta brewery into our book. Uh, we used to work with U.S. breweries and uh, have been only B.C. for quite a time. Uh, but now we're working with Tailgunner out of Calgary. Uh, and they've actually just uh, started brewing out of their own facility now. Uh, they were contracting out of Field and Forge before. But, oh, uh, Blake Tailgunner finally has, got the Caraval uh, gear working. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so, yeah, they're uh, going to be mainly lager-focused as far as the brewery is concerned. Uh, but they are making some absolutely great stuff. Um, they, uh, The brewmaster from there, uh, Blake, as you mentioned, uh, he actually used to work at uh, Godspeed in Toronto, uh, and so he makes some absolutely inc in incredible beer. Uh, Lynn Stevenson is one of my favorite pilsners that's coming out of Alberta. Um, Everybody here is so familiar we're with A, Blake's connection to Godspeed because he was a special guest for a Godspeed event, and B, we've done that pilsner twice. So we were, all, we're right there with you, man. We're right there with you. Uh, so yes, uh, uh, Tailgunner we're working with. Uh, through December, we picked up two more breweries. Uh, Il Sauvage from uh, Victoria, uh, and they are a sour and farmhouse specialty brewery. Um, and so lots of great stuff coming from them. Uh, Strathcona Brewery out of Vancouver, uh, and they do a lot of hazy IPAs and uh, fruited sours as well. Uh, and then most recently, we did just have our first shipment of Superflux Brewing at Land in Alberta, which we are incredibly excited about. Me too. And uh, the, market <laughs> the market's being responded to that incredibly well so far. Um, and uh, then next week, we're actually very excited because we are taking over our second Alberta brewery just for the southern Alberta market, uh, and that's going to be Trial and Ale out of Edmonton. Oh, that's exciting. I've heard good things, mm -hmm. but never tasted it. And yeah, the Superflux, yeah. we got the uh, we got the Manana Pale, 
last week and we got the marigold uh, just actually later or earlier today. So I'm not 100% convinced that that's even on the shelf yet. So the, the marigold pale ale is is fantastic. I will drink that to my death. It is mosaic and Nelson Sauvin hops. Uh, and Nelson Ooh, Sauvin is one of Nelson my favorite Sauvin. hops. Yeah. Oh, it's so good, isn't I it? I know. It's just, uh, and, it's uh, one of those yeah. perfect ones. That was my favorite hop until I discovered like White Holler Tower. And now White Holler Tower is just what I love in my heart. But, you know, it'll get replaced in time. Awesome. We've kept you enough, Grant. Thank you very much for this. And Julie, yes, we will put aside a marigold for you. No question. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much, Grant. Thank you very much, all of you. Uh, we'll see all of you next week for Zero Issue or possibly Friday Night for Grappa. Please come Friday Night for Grappa. For me. This is my tasting for me. It would break my heart if you weren't there. And that's the most shameless I'll ever get because this is the one I really want to do for me. Anyway. Thank you all very much and good night.